Yes, my name is Bench, and welcome back to another Star Made Logic tutorial. In this episode, we'll be looking at how to use a sensor block to get reactive sort of responses on our display modules via the new ability to be able to swap the content of our display modules. So you see, we've got a power bar kind of designed here in our display module, but we want to kind of make it load over time dependent on our actual power so we've got our spot here and let's jump right into it so i'm going to have um four different um states that our display module will be seen in so i'm going to drop down four sensor blocks here and straight away i'll go ahead and just set up a simple clock like so and connect it up so i don't forget to do that now, if we grab our activation modules, we're going to lay out three for each, like so. And then we'll go one, two, three. So this way I have a sensor for when it's completely empty, when my power is completely drained, and then at about 33%, 66%, and then... 100% so that'll give me some good responses and it'll look like everything's loading up so now we'll grab a activation module and put it next to all of our uh, different blocks here and we will drop a not block off the activation module so you can see I've got the activation module for each going into a knot I'll also take the activation module for each of the outputs of our sensors and drop it into an AND gate, then I'll drop on top, like so. Now what I want to do is take the knot from each of the higher ones, so we'll start with our highest, which is the 100% one, and we'll take the knot and run it into the end of the previous one, so the one, one level down. We'll then grab the next knot, as you can see here, and I'll go over to the one, so going from one which has two active, to the one which just has the one active, like so. Then finally we'll take the knot from that and put it in the next one, so, like that. Now we're going to run each of these AND gates into a button. Button, 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 like so. And we'll just toggle each of the bottom ones so the knot gets updated. So now we've got our buttons and I'll quickly explain what we've set up. So our activation module goes into a knot, and when it is active, it's lit up. You can see that when it fulfills the AND gate, it then pulses the button. When the next one in the sequence is activated, it has its knot gate turned off, which switches off the AND gate from the previous one and turns it on. So that means that when we go down again, we're going to refulfill our conditions for the AND gate and it will flicker again. Otherwise, we'll, we'll see the bar go up, but it won't go down. So now that uh, that is all set up, we can grab our display modules and sit them on top like so. And drop them down there. And we will go into our initial block here and just copy what we had. And then we're going to paste it into the new one, which seems to be messing up a little bit. Okay, there we go. So we'll go and we'll copy it into each of them. This one is our one which is completely blank. So we can go through and delete the entire bar. So I want it to start like that. Next, we have one which is loaded up to just about a third of the way. So we'll go through and delete to about a third of the bar is filled. This next one is about two thirds. And this last one is full, like so. So there we have it. So we've taken the buttons underneath and connected it to our display module and then put the other display modules that we're copying over above. The last thing that remains to do is connect all our sensor blocks to the power, like so, the power block, and we can connect them all to the same power block, that's fine. 
and there we go. Now the only thing is, how do I demonstrate this? Well, I'll jump into flight mode and I've got a empty jump drive computer here. So I'm going to drain all my power and we should see, there we go, the bar going down. And now we're depleted and the power is slowly going to regen again and we'll see the power on our display module appear to load back up. So there's a simple way of getting some more visual outputs dependent on what your sensor block is sensing. So that is it for this tutorial here. If you have any questions, hit me up on YouTube or on the forums. Until next time, my name is Bench and thanks for watching.